Hey everyone, I'm Monica and the entrepreneur I chose to profile for this assignment is named Lisa Falzone. Um, when I was looking up people who I might want to choose for this, she appealed to me initially because she's a woman and I feel like women are less featured in the tech world than men. So I thought that was kind of cool. And to top it off, her home, um, what her current business that she's a CEO of is based in Austin where I live. So I was on board from the beginning, but she ended up being a really interesting person. So it's exciting that I got to, that I chose her. Um, so just a little bit about Lisa Falzone. She was a form, she's a former swimmer. She went to school at Stanford and graduated in 2007 and ended up becoming the CEO of her very own company three years later in 2010, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. Um, she did not have any kind of background in technology, which is what her companies involve, or entrepreneurship before she was an entrepreneur. Um, it's not something that she really envisioned for herself until a few years before it happened. So I thought that was interesting. And um, she has, she's in all the interviews I've seen of her, she keeps repeating how she has this passion for racing and competition, which she, use, she uses every day to drive her in her businesses. Um, she says she loves swimming, and just to quote, um, what I loved about swimming and how I see it translate into entrepreneurship and what I'm doing now is you're standing up on that box and you're not sure what's going to happen. You have to deal with uncertainty, you have to deal with very high pressure situations, and you have to deal with putting yourself out there. So that's kind of a, a motto that she stuck with throughout her businesses that keeps her going. Um, so when she graduated from Stanford, she went to work in PR, didn't work out because she realized she wanted to work for herself and no one else. She went into finance, she sold tortilla chips for a little while, and, um, and eventually she hurt her back and she couldn't work. And that's when she said to herself, I'm going to take the leap and go start my own business because this is what, for a while, I felt like I really want to do. This is what I'm passionate about. And she does use the word passion a lot when she speaks. Um, so she started a toy company which was meant to make toys for kids, but it ended up being, the toy ended up being more suited to dogs. So it didn't quite work out the way she wanted, but it helped her figure out what she can improve on for her next business. Um, after that, she was a Brazilian swimsuit distributor and she would go to businesses and do cold calls with PowerPoint presentations. So she really did start all on her own from nothing. She's just trying to figure it out along the way. Um, and she created a lot of baby businesses, as she calls them. She's had um, over 30 startups that she's done. So she's she's done it a lot, and, and it's taught her a lot along the way to get her where she is today. And so um, eventually she started a blog and met someone through her blog named Chris Ciabarra, who became the eventual co-founder of her first big business, which was called Revel Systems. And Revel Systems is responsible for creating the point of sale, the POS uh, system for restaurants. So when you go to the restaurant and they write your order down on an iPad and um, send it to the kitchen electronically, that's something that she worked on. So it was a big deal. And she she just thought with her co-founder, what, what does society need? What would be most beneficial? And I, th I think that's a really cool thing about her because everything she's done, seems to be different, but it's always based on people. And like many of the entrepreneurs we've seen, and you know, what do the people need? What would, what would benefit them the most? So um, in 2017, she sold Revel Systems and started with her previous co-founder, Chris, Athena Security, which created a software that can be added to surveillance systems in a restaurant, in a store, in your home that detects guns. So um, there's a cool video, which I'll link um, with this video down below, um, where someone has a gun, it's a, it's a simulation, but it boxes the gun in a red box and writes the word gun above it, and it automatically calls the police, which I, th I thought was really cool. And she, she made that because she became a mom, and she wanted, um, and since school shootings are unfortunately so, off, they happen so often in America, she wants to make sure her daughter grows up in a safe world. So that's where that idea came from, which I thought was pretty cool. And then Athena Security has also branched out to include, since COVID happened, detection for higher or elevated body temperature in people through the video surveillance. So you can, um, since COVID is associated with higher body temperature and fever, that would be a way to help detect who who is infected before they come into your home or business or whatever it may be. Um, so I, 
I'm really, like I said, I'm really impressed with her ability to figure out what people need and then create it. And she has like an, a natural ability to do that. Um, she's driven by the light at the end of the tunnel is what she said. And her enthusiasm for turning big ideas into actions in her current business, Athena security, um, and its goal of preventing school shootings by detecting the guns and, um, and keeping her daughter safe is what's motivated her currently. So what I like about her is that she's worked hard to figure out what she's passionate about. And then she worked hard to make it happen. And like I said, she came from nothing. And so it's, it's really cool that she created this on her own. And she reminds me in that way of Mark Zuckerberg, who, who had this idea of connecting people. Um, and he initially started with that college um, course program. I can't remember what it's called, where they would sign up for a college course and then they would see who else was taking that course. And, and that idea of connecting people just grew and grew and grew into, I don't know how many businesses before he created Facebook and became the success he is today. So they're similar in that way. Um, trial and error to get to where you are now. And I'm looking at my notes. Um, and it, it does seem rare, especially in the tech world, to find a successful entrepreneur who hasn't been a computer person for his or her whole life. And someone like Ohanian, for example, who was always techie and used all the knowledge and enthusiasm for coding to motivate himself to create his product, Reddit. Uh, Falzone is more motivated by the thrill of the competition and the unknown. And she turns her passion into her products that way. And I love how this shows me that entrepreneurship, it looks differently to each person who is an entrepreneur and there's no set this is how you have to be this is the kind of person you have to be in order to be successful in creating your own business um, another thing that i feel like has been mentioned by so many of the entrepreneurs that we've gone over in class is um Fal and falzone included is that they talk about how much they had to learn that not everyone is um, who they have on their team is going to be as motivated as they are and is going to care as much about their business as they do. And that's something that was hard for them to accept. And I think it's easy to just assume that people around you are, you know, in your brain, same mindset, but um, it's a tough fact to face that they might not be. And uh, so differences between Lisa Falzone and some entrepreneurs we've studied is um, that like, like Mark Zuckerberg and Tony Shea, um, they were similar in the way that they stuck with their companies uh, for, well, not forever, but for, for a really, really long time. Um, Lisa Falzone is not like that. It, uh, for her, being an entrepreneur did not mean having a singular dream and sticking with it. Um, and she, she's taught me that it is, it's okay to, to, um, to go with what suits you in the moment. Um, what, what the vision you have can change from day to day. And that has no bearing on whether you're going to be successful or you're going to fail. Um, so that's how she's different than a lot of the entrepreneurs we've talked about in class. Um, like um, Ohanian, he, he moved on from Reddit to um, initialized capital. So he didn't stick with it forever, just like Lisa Falzone. Um, and Falzone's really people-centered, and she wants to create something that will help society, and that looks different to her at different times in her life, which is why she goes from one thing to the next. Um, some entrepreneurs that we've studied or that I've I've read about on my own um, who moved from one thing to another, um, Ohanian sold Reddit for $10 million in 2006. Um, Ander Michalina, if I'm saying that right, he... He sold his company Ticket Biz in 2016 for $165 million. I know. And then uh, Tony Shea, he sold Zappos in 2009 for $1.2 billion. Um, so those are just a few that, similar to her, have moved on to other things. And uh, so one of her mentors uh, is her co founder, Chris Yabara. Um, he has a technical cybersecurity background, and he helps her understand the tech side of things, is what she says. Um, she also lists a few other mentors, Angela Priestley, Michelle Dipp, Alan Murray, Daniel Roberts, Steve Blank. Um, they've helped make her into the successful entrepreneur she is today, is what she says. So her management style, she keeps uh, her composure in front of her employees. She says that's really important because they can sense stress, and then it affects them, and everything stems from the boss. She says, if you're not happy, none of your employees won't be happy. Um, so that was something 
that seems really obvious, but it was just kind of cool to hear her say. And she also mentioned, um, which I thought was cool because I, I kind of feel this way in my job too, is that um, she prefers in-person conversation or a phone call to emails because emails um, can be read the wrong way, especially if you're in a rush. So she prefers face-to-face -face conversations or just hearing voices. And so her advice for entrepreneurs, and I'll, I'll leave you all with this, is that uh, when you're trying to find your path, it's about finding your passion and not giving up. If you can't be happy doing your work, no one in your company can. It's about not giving up. It's about finding what you want to do. Thank you for your time.